Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint with some really beautiful clouds. So we're going to be focusing on the sky in this one and uh, hope you enjoy it. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight. So if you've got questions while we're painting, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I have just got a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. It's a mixed media canvas board. haven't done anything to it. Um, you could paint it with a yellow. I was thinking I might do like a yellow ochre or light wash of something like that, or even a light orange um, if you wanted to start out with a color, but um, I just ran out of time. Didn't, didn't do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we were literally sitting on the couch going, it's 517. <laughs> we better get ready. <laughs> uh, welcome. If you're new to my, my channel, we're going to be painting this through from start to finish tonight. Uh, and we'll show you the whole process uh, all the way through, good, bad, and ugly, and um, probably talking about other random things as we go, too. So. Am I the Please. ugly one or the bad one? I know you're the good one, so I was just trying to figure out if I'm the ugly one or the good one or the bad one. Good, bad, or ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't know. Don't know. The only two left. Uh, yeah, I know. I keep getting emails from people who are trying to tell me to have you stop talking to me. So, <laughs> got another one yesterday. <laughs> or actually this morning. I was like, I don't even know how to reply to that, so I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> All right, so you're going to want four clouds. We've done clouds before, um, and I have a really good cloud tutorial um, that's really kind of in-depth. This one's going to be a little bit more on the tricky side because it's got lots of colors in these clouds. They're white clouds, um, not a lot of color in the sky besides just the white, and then these clouds are kind of going gray, but it's they're like blue violets and kind of yellows and oranges and pinks and things in them. So lots of colors going on. Um, and we'll walk you through how to do these kind of clouds, but they are going to be a little bit more challenging. So I would say start with the other video. Um, Mark's going to post the link there in chat um, for you and um, then go to, go on to this one afterwards because I think this one's going to be a little bit trickier than that one was. Um, but anyhow, so you're going to want some filberts for kind of basing in some of the clouds and then some sort of a stiff bristled brush. I've got some filberts or some uh, blenders here. These two are blenders and these ones are deerfoot stipplers are called. They just got a kind of an angled tip, um, something like that, that will um, allow you to do this scumbling technique that we're going to be doing for our clouds. Um, all right, let me go over colors really quick. I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, magenta, uh, pyrrole orange, or you can use um, cadmium orange or cadmium red light instead, but this one's kind of in between those two colors. This one is cadmium yellow light. Uh, really any yellow is gonna do. Uh, any kind of light yellow, uh, ca cadmium yellow medium would work too. Thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and then this little guy here is zinc white, which is a transparent white and gloss glazing liquid. Now, if you don't have all these colors, don't panic. Just use what you've got that's similar. That'll be fine. Um, the transparent white, if you don't have that one, zinc white is kind of a odd color. Some people don't use it a lot. So you can just use titanium white and add a little gloss glazing liquid or water to your paint to make it a little more transparent. It works better than that, but... Um, if you in a pinch that that will work. Okay, let's go back. Thank you. All right. Um, so for the uh, foreground here, our hair, sorry, our um, sky is going to take up two thirds of the canvas. Um, so just at the bottom third here, I'm just going to kind of do a sort of slightly rounded green area here so just slightly rounding that raising it on either corner just a little bit all right and then sort of in here somewhere there's sort of a split off that goes like that 
and then there's some trees here and they go off the end and that's really all we're going to do for the foreground we're not going to um, add any kind of fancy trees or anything like that um, I really like the simplicity of this that make the sky really pop having this really dark um, foreground it's almost black um, when I check my values so this is going to be really really dark all of the colors in the brightness is going to come from our sky it's going to be really pretty got a quick paint question all right uh, if you were to recommend one orange to start with okay to their collection which would it be um if you it depends on if you're getting red or not if you're not getting red um this one is a good is a good one to do the pyro orange because it's in between the cadmium orange and cadmium red light if you already have a cadmium red light then i would go with cadmium orange that makes sense um so if you don't have cadmium red light or cadmium orange i would get pyro you know so okay. yeah because this kind of does the work of both all right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to start out with the sky because we've got a lot going on up here. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and kind of paint in the clouds individually. So I may actually, now that I think about it, I think I might not use a big brush. Sometimes I'll paint the whole sky, like do the blue and the white and then do the clouds on top. But I think I'm just going to paint in the sky and do the blue around it around the bits of sky or around the bits of clouds um, or the bits of sky in between the clouds, if that makes sense. I don't know what I'm saying. I think you understand, hopefully. Cloud bits, Cloud check. Cloud bits are going to be painted in, in around. Or, the sky will be painted around the clouds. Or negative cloud bits. Right. All right, so I'm kind of doing even... Um, amounts of thalo blue and ultramarine blue and then I'm going to add quite a bit of white and I'm just going to use what's left on my knife here because that is not going to tint that enough so just what's on my knife is going to be probably plenty and then I can darken it up if I need to Okay, and then we'll have this dark blue up here for other stuff later. And I'm going to keep this fairly, fairly bright, like fairly saturated. I'm not going to desaturate it a whole lot. I might just touch just the tiniest bit of black here and add that to my blue, dark blue. I'm going to use that in here. Go just a little bit deeper with the color. Okay, that looks good. I like that. You're not going to need a lot of that black to desaturate this. I want it to be fairly saturated, fairly bright. And this may not be enough color for this canvas, but it's kind of a small canvas, so we'll see how we do. If we have to, we can mix some more. It's not not going to be that bad. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to spray these down. And then I'm going to mix a couple other colors. Um, so that we've got what we need before we start. So the, the brighter... Um, there's a couple colors going on in the clouds. There's this bright yellow. And I'm going to put in just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of yellow with this big old blob of white. And I don't want it to be obviously yellow. I just want it to be slightly tinted. Even that was almost too much. I think this will work well for us though. So this will be our brightest white clouds parts. And then we'll reserve the white white for if we want to really have an impact um, on top of this. But this yellow will actually almost be brighter than the than this white because it's a warmer color it will come towards us um, and the plain white here is generally um, slightly cool even though it is a you know not supposed to have you know it's be 
completely neutral. White on its own tends to be a little bit cool, and so that would kind of fade back. So this actually might be a little bit brighter um, on our canvas. We'll see as we go. Um, it's never going to be as bright as your as your um, um, if you're looking at it on a monitor. Like if you're trying to get your white as bright as your monitor white, it's not going to be. There's just it's not because it doesn't have light through it. Um, so the white on your monitor is always going to be a little bit brighter than what's going to end up on your canvas. There used to be a white that they used. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like toxic and it was brighter than bright. But we don't use it anymore. Mm. For painting, I mean. All right, let me see. Uh, and I'm ta I'm not talking recent. I'm talking like a long time ago. All right, let's use an orange. I'm going to make up a very light orange, too. So I'm going to get a little bit of that orange and a little bit of the magenta. And I'm using just tiny little bits here because we're not going to need a ton. That might have been too much. And I think I want a little bit of yellow, too. I did not include an Indian yellow hue, which I might regret that. I'm not sure. I may want a little bit of a, a more golden yellow, but let's go ahead and use that. So kind of tiny bits of all three of these warmer colors here to make this. Yeah, I want it to end up being kind of almost like a flesh tone um, salmon, salmon-y orange color. This looks perfect. Okay, so that'll be some of our cloud bits. And then um, I'm going to have a brighter, more magenta kind of cloud, but it's going to have a little bit of a warmer purpley tone to it. I'm going to get a little bit of magenta here and a little bit of the blue. And you can see I just kind of scraped through. So probably half the amount of magenta or twice twice as much magenta and blue. And I have not cleaned out this orange here. So I'm just letting it kind of tint this a little bit lighter. I'm going to skip that off. Oop, I forgot I had all that blue on there. Oh, well. That's not going to hurt anything. How's everybody doing tonight? Oh, everybody's doing well. Yeah. All the unusual suspects showing up. Are they liking the way we're doing the announcements just before the show? Is that helping people to remember it, or does it matter, or is it better to have it all? Like it's kind of stressing me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have everything planned and set in my <laughs> set in stone, and we're kind of sending sending out links at the last minute lately so it's a we got bit a yes much better oh really okay that was one person nice okay we got a so yay far. so far that's 100 percent 100 percent yes check <laughs> all right that's not the right color but we'll just, I'm going to mix it as we go because I want to get going here. So I'm just going to um, start. Actually, let's go ahead and draw out some of these clouds. It'll help me. So, sorry, go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, we got two yeses, one nope. Okay. Two yeses, one no. The email didn't go out as planned. Okay, well, yes, an email did go out at 547 local time. It went, la it went out later because that's my fault because I mm -hmm. forgot to approve it. So, yeah, I got email links. All right, I'm just kind of doing out some basic shapes here so that I kind of have an idea of. Sometimes when I get going with these clouds, I'll end up with them kind of taking on a life of their own. This, this one's like the big mother ship here. It's just going all the way across. And then there's another big one right here. A little pocket of sunlight right there. A little cloud right here peeking out. And then this one is... 
Okay, so there we go. So that's kind of just your your cut off half my canvas here, hon. Thank you. How about that half? Better. Is that better? Okay. It was a mystery reveal. Okay. I, I was answering questions. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> Plus, I'm not talking to you. Mm. It doesn't go well for the show if I talk to you. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit over here and talk to myself. Okay. Somebody, somebody was saying you were being mean to me on the. They didn't like the way your tone. So. <laughs> Like, well, just wait, because I'm sure there's a, another one where I'm doing the opposite, and I'll get a that's email a that says I, they don't like my tone. I know. That's usually how it is. Exactly. Man, I have no I friends. Know. You have to work on your tone around me. How you talk to me. All right, so I'm just going to put in my white hair, and I'm going to put it on fairly thick, and then as it's wet, I'm going to get a little bit of this pink and kind of work it around the edges. Your stomach is talking a lot tonight. It is. Saying thank you for the Twix bar. <laughs> My stomach and I are talking to each other over here. I see. You're like, welcome. You're welcome. All right. Adding a little bit. That is way overblown. I'm going to have to turn this down. Or away just slightly. That's maybe a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Now it's darker. I just need to turn it down. Let me see how I do that. Nope, that's not it. There's a wheel on the side, isn't there? No, okay. Hold on. Ten percent, twenty-five. Okay, fifty percent. That'll work. That's better. I can see what I'm doing, but it's not so glaring. Yeah, sorry guys. All right. Um, a little bit more bright white here. bit more yellow and that to this pink going with a little bit of yellow down here and then up and through there I'm gonna get some blue now if it turns green then add a little bit more of the pink Get a little bit of magenta with this blue. Get some white here. Okay. And I'm using the six filbert here. I'm just going to kind of dab it in as it's wet just to try to blend in my colors. And I'm trying to get them as close to the value that I'm seeing as possible. Sometimes I do it differently, but this time I'm I'm gonna try this. We'll see if we like it or not. And it, uh, since there's so many colors here, I feel like this might help us. But if we don't like it, we can always switch gears. Let me get a little bit of white, maybe get a little bit of this brighter color here and I think what's going to help is if I put in some of the blue because then we'll be able to see kind of better where our contrast is happening so let's do that next Let me clean this out Let me get this blue 
blue. And I think I want to go a little bit more ultramarine now that I'm seeing it on the canvas with these other colors. I think I want to go a little bit more ultramarine blue, which is kind of a purpley tone. I'll kind of just paint around the clouds a little bit. It's okay if you go on top of the white. We'll be going on top of this blue. It's still not quite the right tone. I think it needs a lot more of the ultramarine. some of this to the ultramarine mixture. Okay, that's better. Trying to get it on fairly smoothly. Somebody would like to know why don't you just paint the blue first then the clouds over the blue? I've done that before um, in other videos, so I'm kind of trying to do it a little bit different. And also because the these white areas, it'd be hard to cover them once they've got blue on them. So I think this will give me brighter whites. Um, I'll, I'll have to do fewer layers. It is a little bit backward feeling, but... Um, I think we'll we'll like the result. So bear with me here as I'm doing it. It does seem a little bit weird, but I got no choice. Yeah, I kind of talked it at the about it at the beginning too a little bit. So if they missed the very beginning, I was kind of mentioning sort of my reasoning there. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if anybody watching live actually listens. I don't think so, because no. I often get questions about things that I've already talked about <laughs> by Mark, mostly, but... <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Mark's the biggest culprit. <laughs> so that's why don't okay. you just bring They're just here blue. to talk with you. I know. it's That's how it is. I, I've come to terms with it. <laughs> What were you saying? So why do? So why don't you paint it all blue first, and then the color? No. <laughs> it's a good thing you're too far away for me to smack you. <laughs> See, she's being mean, mommy. <laughs> it's like I don't know what pe people are like. You know, respectfully, you're show would be much better if you got rid of your co-host. Like, I don't know how people should, like, think that I can do this without you. There's no way I could chat and and do cameras and all of that. I guess they just want you to be quiet in the background. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I, can, I can see that. I'm with them on that point. Children, like but. children, you know, you'd be... And they need to go back and watch some of your early, early exactly, videos. and just be glad for what you're getting. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not charging you for this. Now the Patreon people, okay, I could see. And that's if why you, they pay ten dollars to not have me there <laughs> talking. <laughs> exactly. We have a we have a Patreon level for that. Uh, Sign up, pay ten dollars. Not and to then you to don't have to have Mark in there at there all you if you don't want to. He's only there once a month <laughs> for the bonus video. Yeah. All right, doing some light blue here. So as I'm coming down closer, I'm going to switch to a lighter blue 
And if you wanted to do the whole background, then just you would, you know, kind of transition and do the lighter blue at the bottom here. Um, and I'm going to kind of tap in this lighter blue kind of around the areas of the clouds, too, in some places. But it looks good. It's, it's actually, well, it's better than, than you think. It's getting there. Clouds are one of those things that I think kind of freak people out because they kind of look worse before they look better, you know? A lot of things are like that with acrylics, but especially clouds, they just look kind of janky until like the last few layers. And so you just have to kind of trust the process and just keep on layering, keep on going. And I think a lot of people kind of quit halfway with clouds and are like, oh, I'm obviously doing something wrong. And so they just stop, but they're not, you know, don't stop. If you don't like it, just keep on layering until you do like it. You know, that's kind of the best advice. Um, and, and less is more with clouds too. I'm not using a ton of paint here. Um, you want to, well, less is more when I'm saying is use a light touch with the, with the transitions, um, between colors. I still think this is not quite the right purple. I think it needs to be more of a reddish purple. So I think I need to add some orange to it maybe, or, or start with like a, a red instead of the magenta to get a purple that is a little bit more like a red violet. But so far so good. Okay, so there's that. Let me go ahead and keep adding the white here and then we'll we'll uh, block in some of our darker colors. So I'm going to go in here with the white and start adding some of that in. And now that we've got this blue on here, we've got some contrast happening. When we add this white, it's more obvious. Let's add it the purple or pinky color right here. And this brush isn't great for the edges, so I'm just going to kind of fill in the major areas and then work my edges later with my, my um, textured brushes. But um, this is looking okay here. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit right in through here. And I'm starting out with the lightest tone here, which is kind of opposite of what I normally would do, too. A lot of times I'll start out with the darker tones and work to the light, but with clouds, I, I find that, right. Sorry, my mic wasn't on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, start over again. I'll try again. I don't know what I didn't know what you were saying to me. I'm saying that it's because the sun is on top. Right. So the lightest part is furthest away from you. Mm. Interesting. I like it. Science. All right. So this through here is pretty pretty light. And then these are going to be dark areas here, here. And then we've got these lighter areas that are peeking in through here. Get the kind of pink, pink tone. And getting some yellow here. Gonna get a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of this pink tone. 
like right in here I'm going to do this kind of bright brighter area just slightly brighter and then go back to this pink fleshy tone are you still using that six filler? Yeah. yes okay Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm just going to use this all the way up here. I kind of used a little bit of the white when I was adding the blue here. I'm going to get the blue and kind of come over that edge with it back and forth. Just kind of blend that in. I'm going to get some of that purple, maybe a little bit of glaze. The glaze is just going to tone that purple down a little bit or make it more thin, more transparent, and add it right along there, a little gray. Okay, so I've got all of this filled in. Let's go ahead and fill in these clouds here and get some of this blue, and I'm gonna get a little bit of the magenta and cadmium or, or uh, pyrrole orange with my ultramarine blue and see what that does. Okay, so that's giving me a closer, closer to what I want, I think. It's kind of a red violet color instead of a lavender. You can see the difference there. Just adding that little bit of orange there. Oh yeah, that's going to be much better. And I may not want it that dark, but that's going to be closer to what I want as far as the color goes. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to this and just use this to kind of base in some of these bigger cloud shapes here. So it's just a warmer purple. And I'm just going to feather it in so that I have nice soft edges. I don't want any hard edges where I have any like really um, solid shapes to try to soften later. You know, if I put these colors into with, with a hard edge where it's just really outlined obvious, then it's going to be much harder for me to blend them out later so I'm using this soft touch you can see how I'm kind of softly fuzzing out those edges I'm gonna get some of this lavenderish color and use both of these a little bit more of a lavender blue what are you doing getting close to you okay <laughs> hi I said I couldn't talk to you, and they didn't say I couldn't get close to you. <laughs> Just hover over my shoulder. <laughs> oh, are you painting? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to reply, and I was just like, why, why spend time doing that? I don't even want to <laughs> reply to this person. I'm not going to engage. <laughs> okay, so if they don't have the six filbert, uh -huh. what would be the next best thing? Um, any kind of soft bristled brush, um, a, a flat would work. I think a filbert is probably better, but if you have to do a flat, you can use a flat for this. But, uh, I think this, at, the, at this stage, I want, uh, a softer bristle instead of using, I don't know. I mean, you could probably use, I'm going to use this later here, the short filbert. You could use that, um, the Aspen brushes, really any kind of mid, mid size 
brush is going to work for this. You just, the, the nice thing about the filbert is you get these rounded edges and it kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to, uh, do softer, you know, curve, curving shapes that you're seeing in the cloud. But. Okay. And, uh, how difficult would you rate this? This one's going to be a little bit more tricky on the cloud, the clouds. Um, not going to lie. Like, and it, like I said before, when we were first starting it, it's, it's because, uh, there's so many colors in these clouds. So, but, um, it, they're not colors that don't blend well, if that makes sense. So, um, sometimes I'll have cloud clouds that are like, you know, yellow to purple, and those are really difficult to paint sometimes because you have to make sure that your purple and your yellow don't clash. These are these are yellow to purple too, but your yellow and your purple aren't mixing that much. Your yellow is all kind of on these background clouds, and then the, the purple ones are not the same cloud. So you're not having the same issues. You're not having to blend the same cloud into it. Uh, all these different colors, I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, okay. Realizing my drawing was not very good. I should have taken more time with that. All right, I'm going to get some of the orangey color here and I'm going to add a little bit of that purple to it. Use it right in here. This is actually kind of almost bright orange, there we go, like almost red right here, some of these areas. So how do you decide if you're going to do an under coal, under coat layer color or not? Well, like on this one, I probably, if I did an under layer, I would probably do this light orangey, either this color or, or a yellowish color, because those would work pretty well. Um, how do I decide? I really just kind of decide um, when I'm sitting down to paint it. You know, I don't, I don't overthink those. Um, things too much because there's no right or wrong way of doing it you can come out with a very similar result no matter how you start your painting you know um, I do like the under layers because they f I feel like you get a more an instant result you get a more instant um, idea of how mm -hmm. things are progressing because mm -hmm. you've got color already down but it's just like a little shortcut well, I think so. that it adds also this this different tone to the whole painting. It does. And it, it's not like in your face, but it does right. just change it's it. It's subtle, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. The mood or feel that you want to go so, for. So, yeah, a little bit more gold probably uh, would be showing up in our in our cloud colors here. And I think um, just looking at what I've got, I think I do need more, ye more yellow overall in there. I think could have gone a little bit darker here but I can always add dark it's harder to, t to take it away and, um, once it's down all right so I'm going to get a little bit of this blue and add it with my color here this purpley color that I've had and my blue is all dry here let me get a little bit of that brighter blue there the darker blue didn't dry yet get some white and just gonna do up this cloud right here. This has got all letter blue through here. And then this one down here is kind of a darker bluish tone. Getting that purple. Lighter blue at the top where the light's hitting it. 
And it's kind of underneath, farther away, so I'm not seeing as much of it. go a little bit bolder on our color down here so I'm gonna get a little bit more of the orange and magenta and a little bit of yellow get that salmon tone going and a little bit brighter value so we got a nice orangey. Let's go a little bit more on the pink side to get that salmon. And then adding a little bit of white to it. So I've got it, it's kind of, maybe added a little bit too much yellow. And I think I might even Okay, there we go. I think I might even add a little bit of the blue to it. Okay, that's better. Added just a little bit more magenta. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that down here. I'm gonna use some glaze like I did with that over here so that I get a little softer application. Too much glaze there. I don't know what I was thinking there. Way too much. And I'm going to get some of this base color here and kind of just paint it around. Get some of that yellow too. There we go. Just until it kind of softens. And I'm going to go ahead and go all the way across our tree line with this. along the bottom and streak it up here. So perspective wise the clouds at the top of the painting are closer and the ones in the middle of the painting are right. further away. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then somebody said that they like the ring on the bird finger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the bird finger I like that. <laughs> is that what orange is that again? Sorry, you talked about it twice now. Pyrrol. Pyrrol. That's right. <coughs> I'll show you how it's spelled. Not the good way. P y r r o l d. here in my clouds so once you use it somewhere you probably want to use it a couple other places that will help unify it plus we also needed to add some of this this is much better these are starting to get much closer to the color that we want them to be Fitzy's growling Already having stress dreams about dropping my dog off. I'm He's going to doggy boot camp to learn how to behave and on the leash and stuff for three weeks, and I'm not looking forward to it. He doesn't know, but I'm stressed out. You'll be happy in four weeks. I will be happy in four weeks, but it, like I dreamed the other night that I left him at the vet and didn't know where he was and was like panicked and it's like one of those dreams I used to get when my kids were little mm -hmm. <laughs> only now it's the dog <laughs> I didn't forget my homework I forgot my dog <laughs> please note she's never had that dream about me Yellow hair. 
And so, you know, yeah, that's interesting. I don't think I have actually now that you said that. So, I know what that says about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a point where we're like, okay, we can start to sort of see that we may be on the right track, you know, kind of like before we're just kind of like, mm, well, we're doing this wrong. But now we're kind of, okay, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. At least I feel like we are. So, um, like I said, just kind of push through your, you're going to kind of, and, and we're, we're definitely, you kind of have to squint to see the good parts, right? You know, we're definitely have some major issues with transitions. So that's what we're going to work on next. We've kind of got blocked in the basic values, sort of close to where they're going to be. Um, got all these background bright values in sort of, um, these bright whites and things in. Our sky looks pretty blotchy, so we're going to have to put another layer on it. Um, but, you know, we've got at least a, a layer down. We're, we're, we're started, right? So let's go ahead and let that dry really well. And while that's drying, I'll work on this foreground here. I don't think I'm going to do this line of trees yet because I don't want to have to um, paint over around the sky area. So I'm going to do that probably one of the last things that I do. One of the last things I do. Well, <laughs> if it's the last thing I do. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I always have to say that when I use that phrase. Um, I apologize. I'm going to get some orange and add it to my phthalo green. I added a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber just to darken it up. I think this is going to be kind of my color. I might add a little bit of yellow. Um, I'm going to go a little bit darker even still. And I might add a little bit of phthalo blue just to make it a little bit, yeah, there we go, more of a foresty green, pretty, pretty color. We will be adding a little bit of highlights onto this, but, and I don't know that I'm going to do a whole lot of these flowers in the foreground. We'll see how we do on our clouds and stuff. I'm not really, that, not, uh, not really worried about the foreground plants. They're, they're all blurry anyways in the picture, so they're not really in focus or anything. I might add a little hint of it, but I think the main star is the clouds, so I'm going to put my efforts in there on this one. This is too saturated. I can already tell. A little too bright. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the yellow and add that to my phthalo green. I got a little bit of burnt sienna too while I was doing that. Snuck that in. All right, so making a much more olive. There we go. <coughs> much more olive tone. That works. This will go on top here. All right, so that'll work. That'll be much better, and that olive, more olive tone is a little closer to what I want. I want it to be real desaturated and dark. Okay, I think this is going to be dry enough. So let me do this. I'm going to clear off my workspace because I've got lots of stuff going on here and all this is dry. Okay. Yeah, I'm just 
just gonna get rid of all this. It's just not, I'm, I think that blue is still okay, but everything else is pretty much shot. Just scraping it off here. It's just a glass scraper, nothing fancy. I've got a glass palette here. Links down in the description. What? Amazon store. Yes, it's <coughs> in the Amazon store and also on Blick, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the link's down in the description for all this stuff that I'm using. It's the New Wave Posh glass palette. Yes. Hers is a 12 by 16. People always ask the size. And but her, I, I don't use all of it. Her I, water is I, sitting on top of part of it, too. Yeah, so I just don't have room on my... I would be using all of it if I had room and under my camera for it, but I don't. Challenge I accepted. I can't reach it the way it, mm. it's laid out. And I, I wanted to show the water, too. Because mm -hmm. the water is a big part of acrylic painting how much water you're adding and stuff really does make a difference. All right, I'm going to put out a few fresh colors here. Yeah, so hopefully people, when they watch it back, they notice how often you're dipping your brush and stuff. Right. That's why you put it there, so they yes. can see right. <clears throat> how much you're actually using. Mm -hmm. When to add water and not. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with... Let me think here. I think I'm going to use this one. This is the 3 8 inch blender. I'm going to get a little bit of water. You don't have to add water. But, um, all right. So I'm going to get a little bit of this yellow. I'm going to uh, mix up some more of this yellow color that I had before. But I'm adding a little bit more yellow this time. Wow, I added way too much yellow. See how yellow that is. So let's let's make this a different color then, because this is going to be way too much. Um, let's go ahead and add our orange. And our pink. And make our salmon color that we will, we're using for this bit down here just now. Okay, that looks good. It's probably a little bit bright. So I'm going to add a little white to it down here. But that's pretty close. I can't really tell. So that looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to add the white to this blue we have here to make some more of the sky color and we added a lot more ultramarine blue to it let me go ahead and use that someone just asked so glaze is more chroma you added glaze I guess to the paint what? Did you add a glazing liquid to the paint? Um, no, okay. not there, not just in. Okay. No. Um, glaze tra make, adds transparency to the paint. So if I wanted to take this blue and make it where it's transparent and go over another area, like say over here, and I want it to be like softer, you know, a softer blend over the top and just so that I could see that mm -hmm. under colors underneath, then I would do that. If I want it to be a solid color, I don't need to add the glaze to it. Okay. Um, I'm going to get the zinc white here and add that to the blue that I've got in my brush. And I'm going to use it kind of around the edges of some of these clouds here and start adding little puffs of softness the transparent white will help 
and that zinc white being transparent will help it go on a little softer. I'm going to get a little bit of that more opaque blue too and use that. And you see what it's doing, but it's kind of creating these really wispy... Oops, I just got paint on my microphone. Sorry. It's doing these little wispy things. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to create this softening up the edges of my clouds so that I don't have these hard lines where the sky and the cloud meet. Mm. There's hardly any hard edges if you really look. And I zoomed in on these clouds. Even this one where it looks like it's really obvious against that blue, there is just a little bit of a soft edge on, on all of these. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Just kind of going through here. I'm using the blue with the sky, you know, the sky color and the white. But you can use whatever, you know, like I could use. I'm going to grab some of this purple or uh, salmon color and add a little bit of this blue to it and use that right here. And what I want is just a soft transition between my sky and my blue, my clouds. And then I can worry about what's going on inside my clouds once I get the outer edges looking good. That part's easy. It's these outer edges where the blue and, and the sky and the air, whatever, you know, the cloud and the sky meet is where you'll see the most problems with people when they're doing clouds because it looks it'll look hard it'll look um, unreal okay getting some I'm trying to remember what color I added I think I added let's try burnt sienna that'll give us a, that kind of a quinacridone burnt orange color and then I'm going to add the sky color some white there get some glaze the glaze just makes it more transparent so that it goes on softer and I can see the blue through okay that looks good I'm just gonna add a little bit of that up there that may not be quite the right color but I'm I don't mind it so I'm gonna go ahead and go with it this in a couple more places. Yeah, this is nice. And we're, if you notice, we're using all the same colors. We haven't added any new colors. So we're using all these same, you know, handful of colors and just doing different mixtures of them. And that's what you're seeing in these clouds anyways. You're seeing kind of, you know, all these different colored hues just kind of mingling and changing color. That looks really good. I like that one. I like that color. This color is working pretty well. So it's a little bit redder than the red violet that we used before. A little bit. It's a good transition between that that uh, um, salmon tone and and the purples. So it's got a little bit of both in them. So I'm using the salmon color here, and really depends on where your clouds are at and what you need on yours. So you know, it depends on how you how you filled in your first layers. I'm going to get some unbleached titanium. That has kind of a yellowy tone to it. And I think that'll work in, up in here. That's good. Yeah, that's nice. So I'm using this rough brush, bristled brush now too so that I can really scrub and I'm I'm scumbling is what it's called. Stippling is when you're tapping. 
Scumbling is when you're scrubbing and you're doing like this. So that's the difference. <coughs> Basically the same brush, similar techniques. Um, you're just um, staying in contact with the canvas more with this as we're laying down the paint keeping the brush down on the canvas and creating texture that way. Okay. Let's go ahead and get some of that brighter tone. I'm gonna kind of transition between that lighter color there and the darker. Let's get that. I'm laying down enough paint here that I'm not really dry brushing at this point um, in some of these areas. Like where I want these two colors to meet, I kind of added a pretty good amount of paint so that I could get them to blend for me. And then let me, I need that purpley tone though, so I need to get some magenta. I'm gonna get some of the burnt sienna magenta and some of this sky, dark sky blue. And then let's look let's look and see what that looks like when we add a little bit of white to it. Okay, so that's gonna be nice. I can add a little bit more blue to it if I want a little bit more of a blue purple. But I like that. Okay, so that's gonna work. We'll use that in here. That's very similar to what we had before. And I want this color to be, don't be afraid of being pretty dark. I want this color to be fairly dark. Here. This is what's going to give it that drama. I want this edge to be really soft right here. So I want to blend into that purpley tone. I want this to be soft here and I want it also to be soft at the bottom. So I'm really kind of scrubbing it out so that I'm getting a nice soft edge. It's kind of blending straight into the blue here. And if you scrub off too much paint right here, that tells me that that under layer of the other, the color that we had just before that was drying and I lifted it. So there's not a whole lot I can do there. I'm going to just have to leave that. I'll have to put paint, more paint down later once that's dry. That happens. Okay, getting some of the lighter blue and mixing it with this color that I've already got. So it's going to kind of create this softish purpley blue. That's really nice. Okay, and just kind of come up against the edge of these clouds here and just soften that out. <clears throat> dogs in the neighborhood. I'm gonna get some of this purple and add a little bit more of like burnt umber to it. A little bit more blue just to do it darker. You're done you're you're done just, yeah. telling them off. Good job, Fitzy. Just have a tell them to be quiet mom streaming. <laughs> Keep it down. Bits. Good job. Okay. Yeah, I want this to be kind of that purpley blue, almost like a Prussian blue, but not as saturated. Just scrubbing on some color there. Okay. I'm going to bring this 
this down a little bit more than what I have it now. Get a little bit of that purpley tone. And really, this is where you just, you're going to work any of these edges where you see really, really rough transitions between your colors. And you just have to kind of take it one at a time. It helps if you have these other colors kind of pre-mixed that you've used before. So, um, you know, like I know this one was kind of a bluish purple tone. So you can get some of this purple and add some of the blue to it. Um, try to get a color that's get it matching but sometimes you're just going to end up having to paint over a color if you can't get it quite you know matching but I'm just going to work certain areas here until I like it and then move on you know so um, if I'm skipping around but I am trying to kind of get um, a little bit more of a cohesive look in some of these, you know, now. Like this is, this these are finishing touches that I'm putting on now. I'm not laying down new colors necessarily. I'm just kind of working with what's already there and trying to kind of transition the colors. So I've got this really dark purple here and then I've got this, you know, these other colors up here and it's just laying on top and it's not really meeting and melding with them. So what I'm trying to do is figure out what the color above it is and then maybe try to mix a color that's sort of in between those two colors. So taking this darker purple here and then maybe where it's meeting this salmon tone, I can mix the two of those together and end up with a color that I can use around the edges of it and kind of soften and then just keep doing it until you kind of get a color that you like, you know, a transition that you like. So then I can see over here, I can see it's pretty obvious where it meets up with this coral. So I'm going to get some more of that coral go back over. That purple is still wet right there, so it should blend, and it's blending for me nicely right there. So I'm able to kind of blend those out. And now I've got that a, a blend between that dark purple and the coral areas. That's a little bit softer and nicer looking. Get some of that darker blue to use some of that blue up here. And this is that area where that color kind of came off, so it's dry now. I can put more color down. from that blue to the coral so I'm going to put more blue down 
kind of in the center and then just softly kind of brush it over the coral that I just put around it. got some weird kind of rough areas here so I'm going to get some of the white that was in my cloud it's a little tiny bit yellow so I'm going to get a little bit of yellow too edges there a little bit. Just adding a little fluff. A little dry brush along the edge. And then going over the top of some of the colored areas to just soften up. This is titanium white because I, I had some kind of rough looking layers there I didn't like so going back in with fairly opaque color here but if you didn't if you don't need to you can kind of go in with a little softer maybe some zinc white instead but I needed to cover up some stuff that I didn't like so that's why I'm going in with a little bit brighter or more opaque color here and I'm going to get the coral color and use that now as I come down the cloud, it gets a little bit more pink. And then I've got this area in here that's pretty light. All through here. kind of a light blue but go ahead and do this and I'm gonna go ahead and just use this light white up in other areas where I need it I got it pretty good in most of these areas by painting around it We've got some pretty good light, light areas, not having to do a whole lot of backtracking on that. I think a little bit more brighter coral yellow in some places here. This is just layering and layering and layering. Now it kind of looks maybe a little bit boring, I don't know, but hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully it's starting to look like something to you. Get the idea? Well, it kind of shows that. Uh, you can't just slap uh, a couple colors on the thing and think that your clouds are going to be done. Right, right. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't want it that blue, I don't think. Ooh, the, this is 
drying out. That was my purple. Okay, and so then these clouds are gonna start to really kind of come up over this white in some places. I kind of pushed them back a little bit, but now I'm gonna cover back up some of these white areas. Like this area here is kind of looking funky. So let's get some of this white. the darker purple. random darker clouds that are sort of just hovering over and letting a little bit of that those closer or farther away clouds that are brighter peek through and get a little bit of glaze that'll help the these clouds to go on a little bit more transparent in some of these areas where I'm going to start to put them Still scumbling. <laughs> scumble, scumble, scumble. Still scumbling. Okay, but we're getting real close. See how we're getting now these pockets of light that are kind of peeking through and looking really nice. Some of these blue areas that are in here. Push back some of the clouds. Okay, a little bit of white with the blue down here. Ones are a little bit lighter. I have not cleared out the purple out of my brush, so it's kind of tinting this a little bit too. That's okay.
Okay, so let's work on that one. That one's kind of looking weird over here. Getting some of the... Coral and adding that. I still have some of this blue on my brush. That's okay. Add the coral here to it. It'll create a whole new color. Nice. I like it. Yeah, I like that coral with the blue. So let's use that, that in a few other places. It's got a nice almost green but it it's a nice transition. Nice gray to use in here. It's working. Let's use it on this. I think this is going to be the right color for down here. Go a little bit darker with it, a little bit more of the sky. And then that coral. And use the coral, a little bit of the purple, a little bit of that blue. blue is too dark so I'm kind of tinting it a little bit lighter. Good. Okay, that looks better. How are we doing? I am doing great. How are you doing? Good. Doing good. I think we're getting closer to where I want to be on these. This takes a while. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Oh, wow, we're already over an hour and an hour and a half almost. Yeah. Can't believe it. Scumble like you stole it. Hmm? You gotta scumble like you stole it. I know. Alright, let's get some of this gray here. Some of this blue and coral. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. Use it right here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm like, oh, we should be done, and then I see a whole nother cloud that I haven't even done yet. You know, mm -hmm. like I haven't even started on. Look all of this over here. This is pretty good. I need to I need to add more of the purpley clouds over here though. Kinda of bridge that gap right there. So when you when you're ready to do these kind of clouds where you want them to look really wispy, what you want to do is just wait till most of that paint's out of your brush before you do it. Because if you do it when your brush is too wet with paint, you're going to end up laying down a lot of paint, and you may not want that much. So just kind of wait until your brush is almost dry, and then dude, I'm going to get this red red violet color here. Some more of that. Add that back in. And the glaze can help too. So you don't have a ton of paint on your brush. The glaze will help it go farther because it'll help it keep keep it kind of that transparent color you want. Um, and not get too dry because can get kind of crumbly looking, you know, um, if you add too much dry brushing in. So... You kind of want a mix of soft and like there. We haven't even done 
this whole cloud right here. <laughs> We're almost there. Get some of this coral color, a little bit of the white. <clears throat> Go up here and kind of add some wispies that are a little bit more obvious. bit of white. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to get a little bit of glaze with this kind of red-violet color here. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it so it's a little softer. And then I'm going to use it up here on this cloud here to add some of the wispies over the top that we're seeing. If it's not dark enough, just grab some of the darker. Because I want this cloud to look like it's kind of encroaching on top of this one just a little bit. Still probably things that I could do to this, but I may be running out of time, so I'm going to try to stop here. The clouds are one of those things that, I mean, I've done a whole lesson on clouds in our um, challenge videos on with my patrons, where we just painted the same cloud for days, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <clears throat> complicated cloud can take a while to get right, you know, so give yourself time every now and then take a step back, look at it with fresh eyes um, it can it can be, you know take a little bit of practice to get comfortable with 
some of these techniques, but I think that I think it's doable, you know? I think it's just a matter of layering and transitioning your colors properly between and you can go back over areas that are dark with your lighter colors and you know you don't nothing is ever set in stands or you know it's set in stone here so you can you can go back in. You can't overwork them. So, you know, I would say don't... I, I think I, I have overworked clouds before where they just look like tortured after a while, you know. Um, so I think it's good to kind of just stop and take a look at it after every now and then. Because sometimes areas that you think are really bad may not be be as bad as you think after you know after you look at it with fresh eyes sometimes when you get right in the middle of your painting things can really like take on you can fixate on you know a certain area that is just not that bad you know and work it over and over again until you've kind of killed everything that looked good about it you know um I've done that. So stop yourself every now and then. Take a break. Look at it from a distance. I'm looking at mine up on the monitor and comparing it to my reference photo and seeing. Still think that I could go a little bit brighter with my saturation in this area, but I think for overall, I'm fairly happy with it. I think that, I think that my, my, um, this cloud it could be. A little bit pinker overall so I'm gonna take this salmon color here and glaze it and glaze it down here and just darken this up just a little bit and my trees are gonna be in through here so I'm not too worried about this, but I'm going over the top of the bottom of these clouds there. And then I'm going to use it in this cloud here. This just glaze in this purpley or uh, salmon color. And I did notice a little bit of it kind of in along the edges here so I'm going to kind of create some shadows along this edge with it okay the yellow yeah okay I like the yellow a little bit better yeah that's nice Okay, I'm going to stop there. Let's go ahead and do the do the trees here. Let me get the black. I don't think this green is good anymore. No. I'm going to get the green and a little bit of that orange. 
damage. You know, create our trees. I want them to be solid along the horizon line, so I'm just going to kind of tap along there, and then wherever I want to do a tree, I'm just going to kind of come up and let the tip of the brush create some textured area. I'm kind of using the back end of the brush where it's more thickly coated to tap in my line there. Isn't that nice? It really adds a lot to it. And then let's just kind of add some different size trees here. And I'm getting gradually smaller. And right past the halfway mark, I'm going to stop with them. Do kind of a one last little bit. Okay. And then I go a little bit taller with some of these ones in the middle here. the very tip I'm going to turn my brush upside down and just dab in just a few little small deals right along that horizon line there on that side. And I'm going to get back my large brush that I used for the foreground and get some of this dark green and use it to do that darker area right here and I'm gonna also kind of clean up that edge right there while it's wet okay get some of the lighter green Yellow, make some yellow, a little bit of thalo blue, a little bit of orange. That orange is making that it kind of like a green gold almost. That more olivey toned green. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna to tone it down even more. The yellow's already kind of made it fairly light. I don't need to add any white to this. I'm just going to kind of go back and forth here and create a little bit of a hint of a light hitting it. don't need a lot. Get a little bit of black with my yellow-green. get some of the yellow and thalo green or orange color and I'm just going to use the edge of my brush and kind of brush it back and forth. In fact, I think I might use my my blender. Yeah, I'm just kind of drag it through to create some the slight highlight areas. 
And I still want these to stay fairly dark though, so don't go too bright with this. And then I'm gonna do the same back in here. And just kind of soften up this transition right here so it's not so dark. Okay. Still don't love it 100%, but I'm going to have to call that almost done. Let's, uh, going to add some little flowers to the front here. Might as well use this coral and some of the magenta. Maybe get some of that. No, maybe blue. Some of the sky blue color. A little bit of the magenta, a little bit of the coral. Don't go too much on the coral because the coral will turn your blue uh, gray. So I just want a little, little bit of I'll just do some little. Looks like some lavender or something, heather maybe, and get some of the green it around coming up so that it's obvious that it's in the foreground and not not a plant that's out in the fields I have run out of green get some white Let's try and I like the I like the hint of purple down here because it kind of it kind of mimics the colors in the sky a little bit, so I do like it. I'm just making some thalo green here. I'm gonna add a little bit of that orangey tone and my yellow. I'm trying to make similar color to the fields but maybe just a little bit different so that it stands out. Here's some kind of spiky grasses and things down here. I'm right, gonna use some darker black with my yellow. Black and yellow are going to make a nice dark green, like an olive toned green. I'll use that. And so. I don't know. I like it either way, with or without this. You can decide if you want to have the flowers or not on yours. I kind of, kind of like them, but also I haven't done a whole lot of work on them, so. Going a little bit brighter with some of these. Just another layer on top. Keep them fairly dark though, don't go too bright with these because you don't want them to take away from your sky. And get a little bit of the darker red here. Good. 
instead I'm going to use some of this color in the sky since I've got it's a new color and I want to make sure that it matches what's going on up here. I'm going to use my finger and just kind of rub out the edge too. That's another thing that you can do. I didn't do it with this one, but... Ready for a super chat? Sure. All right. Let's bring out the cowbell. <laughs> super chat. Even though you can't hear the cowbell anymore, it's there. I could hear it. I could hear it too. You could hear it through my headphones. Okay. It was pretty loud in my ears. <laughs> you may need to tone that down <laughs> a little bit. Alrighty. Here we go. Boom. Super chat from our friend Carol. Mm -hmm. it says, thank you both for making my Tuesday evening so enjoyable. Oh, thank you, Carol. Chat and chatters are a plus. Oh. So... I think she's okay with us talking. Yes. Thank you, Carol. Yes. It's the people like Carol who we listen to. <laughs> <laughs> the people who've been with us for years and years exactly. and years. And, <laughs> yeah. and appreciate how we do things, even if it is a little quirky. <laughs> I appreciate you guys, too. I understand if you're just here to learn to paint that the chatting may be a little weird. We didn't chat much today, though. You weren't. Yeah, at first we did, but then you got into scumbling. And huh? You got into scumbling. Yeah. And so. mm, what I'm trying to teach, I get a little more serious. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing different stuff, I tend to chat, or, you know, if I'm doing repetitive stuff, I tend to ch be a little bit more chatty because once you explain it once, you don't need to explain it over and over and over again, you know. Um, a lot of times there's not a whole lot else to add to the conversation. It's just time consuming, you know. You just have to do the thing. So that's when, usually it's when I've got a painting that's like that, that I have will get chatty because there's not a whole lot to teach at that point. I've already taught it, you know two or three times probably and then you know you're just kind of having to implement it and it's not a fast process sometimes you know sometimes it takes a minute to get a minute or an hour or two <laughs> okay that's better I like that softer blue that I just added on there just kind of softened up some of these edges here this cloud here might need a little bit more of that a um, little bit more darkness to make it obvious it's in front, but we've got so much going on in here. It's pretty fun. I, I, I like these kind of clouds, and then I hate these kind of clouds, you know? It's like when I'm halfway through them, I really hate them, and then when I get done with them, I like them, but sometimes in the middle, it's just like, ugh, you feel like you're not ever going to finish them because they just feel like they, you 
there's more and more and more details that you're seeing, but I think we're, we're close. We're close where I wanted to be with them. Maybe not exactly, but good enough for Tuesday night, right? I can't. I'm trying to be a little bit more, um, not necessarily loose is the word, but a little bit more um, I don't know what I'm trying to say <laughs> less perfectionistic on Tuesday nights that's what I mean just trying to kind of get it good for a you know beginner painter I'm trying to do kind of more beginner type stuff this one is definitely on the more advanced side as far as the clouds go because they were kicking my butt so I know that they're a little bit more tricky um, and I think it's just because there's so much going on here but but it, they are doable so don't don't not do it just because they're hard practice, try it practice practice yep, it's good practice again like I said if this is the first time you're doing clouds I would try with my cloud tutorial first do that one first get get some experience, you know, maybe do a couple of tutorials that have some clouds in them that are a little bit easier and then tackle this one. Um, just so you're not frustrated. I don't want you to be, you know, do this one and be like, Oh, I can't do clouds. You know, um, you can do clouds. They're just, they're just layers. You know, you just have to kind of approach them in stages and layer and layer some more and then layer again. And, Keep, there's a lot of blending. Um, I think that that also, if blending's a problem, then these can be really good practice too. So, um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll be back next week with another video. We're going to be talking about brushes next week. So, next week I won't be doing a formal tutorial. We'll be just talking about brushes so if you um i'll probably be posting a few days ahead of time in my social media with questions so if you've got questions you can post them um on the um, posts there that you'll see in my social media or you can post them here in the chat um on this video and i'll we'll be kind of pulling questions from all over um and also on the night of the video obviously we'll be also taking questions but I'll be trying to kind of do a comprehensive all about brushes what brushes to buy what brushes I like for acrylics what brushes you'd buy for other types of painting and projects why you know certain brushes are good for certain types of techniques and not others um, and all that kind of thing you know the most common questions that I get about brushes um, they can be really um, daunting. I'll also show you some brushes that I bought um, for very cheap and compare those with my more professional brushes and see how they perform um, just to show you the difference between a cheaper brush and a uh, more quality brush and what you can expect from that. A lot of times um, if you're having trouble um, and you're new to painting, it could be just your brush that's the problem. Um, not always, but, you know, that can have a factor in it. So, um, anyhow, I hope you tune in for that. And uh, thanks very much. Hope you guys have a great weekend. This is our, that's, is it our bonus video weekend? It is, isn't it? Yes, we're doing a bonus video. We'll have a Patreon. If you're interested in our Patreon, um, program it is a patreon.com slash angela fine art it's a totally separate website it just gives you access to other videos that we have um not on youtube um that are um videoed for our patrons only and there's several hundred of those that are exclusive to our patrons um the last one we did last month was this one here whoops that was a book. This was our last bonus video for the $5 level. Um, when you sign up, you get a traceable for the project, the reference photos, a, f a picture of my finished painting, and then access to the video and um, uh, 
all of the previous videos as well. So there's that one. This is the $10 level. Um, we do a project um, all month long. So we're starting on a new one. I won't even, I don't know. I don't want to show you because it's in, it's really in the ugly stages right now, but we're working on a old mill right now. It doesn't look like much, but it's going to have all kinds of flowers and some water and different things in there when we get it done. But this oh, is an example of what we did last month you, in you the $10 should, level. You showed on my finished painting there, sorry, of the mill. Yeah. So, and then that's the $5 level. The $5 level, you get once a month an extra video, one extra video once a month. Um, with the $10 level, we do once a week, um, when I can, not always and not every week, but most, most weeks we do a, on Thursdays, we'll do a, an extra video that's an hour to two hours long and we work on the same project all month long. So that's what that one that I showed you, the bonus video for this month is going to be a barn <sighs> landscape. So that'll be coming up this weekend. So on Sunday, not Saturday. Not sure why I did it on a Sunday. I think we were, I really don't know, but anyhow, yeah. Um. <laughs> we thought we might have uh, Noah with us. That's right. That's what it was. So we made sure we were going to be free on Saturday if, yes. if that was going to happen. That's right. Yep. Okay. So it's, yeah. All right. So, anyways. so anyhow, thank you guys so much. I know you can tell I'm tired. I'm just rambling now. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>